the next one is shadow banking shadow banking another word is what is shadow banking shadow banking means that there are nbfis non banking financial institutions of various types existing in the indian context and this nbfi non banking financial institutions are not working according to the banking companies act of india they are not established on basis of the banking companies act and they are established on the basis of the companies act of india on basis of the provisions contained in the companies uh, act of india such an institution legally established in the indian context but at the very same time they are also doing uh, their business of traditional banking type for example muthu to bankers is a non banking financial institution koshamattam banking a non banking financial institution lic that is a public sector and engilum non banking financial institutions are. and these banks are accept deposit in one way or another they are also accepting deposit they are also lending loan a traditional banking business they are doing but not under the purview and control of the rbi they are not under the purview and control of the rbi as it is not established on basis of the banking companies act of india as it is not established on basis of the banking companies act of india we find they are not under the proper control and purview of the reserve bank of india they are doing their business similar to a traditional bank they are also doing. so their work is in the form of what in the form of a shadow of the real commercial bank they are working similar to a shadow of the real commercial bank and their banking business is what is known as the shadow banking business and the shadow banking and such a non banking financial institution is actually a headache also to the reserve bank of india the proper controlling of the money market rbi cannot rbi cannot do the proper regulation and control of the banking institution in india because some of the banking institutions are working not under the control and mesa uh, provisions of the rbi they are established on basis of the company act of india but they are doing very same traditional banking functions and hence they are known as the uh, shadow bank uh, though they are accepting deposit and lending loan they do not have the check leaf facility they cannot have they cannot have the check leaf facility check leaf facility is allowed only to those commercial bank established on basis of the com- uh, basis of the banking company act and this facility is not allowed to the shadow banking non banking financial institution so that is also another term that you have to remember with regard to the policy measures about many of the concepts we have taken for the purpose wait 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 Since they are not under the purview and control of the uh, Reserve Bank of India, RBI is having only a uh, partial controlling facility. Proper controlling is not possible. Where is it? It is established on basis of the Companies Act of India and they are not for the purpose of doing this banking business. Side by side sometimes they may do this work of traditional bank also. Where is it? Ah, ah, yes, yes. They have also other business. Many other uh, business, not only that of a proper commercial bank, many other type of uh, uh, works permitted by the company sector of India is undertaken. Commercial bank or even banking, matra hai. Matra hai, kya? Even other non-banking, there are institutions concerned with non-banking. Allah. 
can can be LIC for example what is the purpose of LIC it is a governmental organization it is also uh, accepting deposit in the form of premium LIC premium they are accepting they are also giving loan keeping LIC uh, that is certificate as a asset loans they are lending <laughs> ജസ്റ്റ് ഓപ്പോസിറ്റ് ആയിട്ടേ പെരുമാറത്തുള്ളൂ അതുകൊണ്ടാണ് പറ്റില്ല ഇൻ കേസ് ഓഫ് കേരള ഓൾസോ ബി ഹാവ് ഫിനാൻഷ്യൽ എൻ്റർപ്രൈസ് റൺ ബൈ ദി ഗവൺമെൻ്റ് ആണ് സ്റ്റേറ്റ് ഗവൺമെൻ്റ് ആണ് അത് മെയിൻ ബിസിനസ് ഈസ് ചിട്ടിയാണ് ദർ ഡൂയിങ് ദ ചിട്ടി പക്ഷേ അറ്റ് ദ വെരി സെയിം ടൈം ദർ ആർ ഓൾസോ ഹാവിങ് ഡെപ്പോസിറ്റ്സ് ഡെപ്പോസിറ്റ് വിത്ത് ഡെപ്പോസിറ്റ് അവിടെ എടുക്കുമല്ലോ ആൻഡ് സോ ഓൾസോ ദർ ലെൻഡിങ് ലോൺസ് ഫോർ ഹയർ പർച്ചേസ് loans are also given but the traditional banking function is doing but they are not meant for that purpose their purpose is something chitties nidhis kuris in many other terms we know in the uh, north malabar region especially in uh, trishur um, uh, kannur etc we have such types of things ah 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 rbi da kid varu illa not under the regulation other scheduled bank ayirnale pattathullu minimum scheduled bank is uh, necessary for the proper regulation and controlled by rbi adhi isaf mathramalle ullu allade thanne kuris ennu paranju nidhis ennu paranju okke ee nammade malabar side il undu just like we say chitties chitti funds not under the rbi adak nbf is sir non banking fair visa fangane visa fangane gala visa fees scheduled bank aanu and baaki ulla institutions are so the next one is nane nane adu edu category nbf i ഫിനാൻഷ്യൽസ് <laughs> 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 അണ്ടർ ദ ഗവൺമെൻറ് സെക്ടർ ഇപ്പം ഫിനാൻഷ്യൽ എൻ്റർപ്രൈസ് എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് അങ്ങനെയല്ലേ ഗവൺമെൻറ് സെക്ടറിൽ ഉള്ള നോൺ ബാങ്കിങ് അല്ലേ എൽ ഐ സി എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ഗവൺമെൻറ് സെക്ടറിലുള്ള നോൺ ബാങ്കിങ് അല്ലേ സെൻട്രൽ ഗവൺമെൻറ് ഇത് സ്റ്റേറ്റ് ഗവൺമെൻറ് തന്നെയാണ് ഡിഫറൻസ് യെസ് അപ്പോൾ ദ നെക്സ്റ്റ് വൺ ഈസ് ഇൻസ്ട്രുമെൻറ്റ്സ് ഇൻ ദ ഇന്ത്യൻ മണി മാർക്കറ്റ് ഇൻസ്ട്രുമെൻറ്റ്സ് ഇൻസ്ട്രുമെൻറ്റ്സ് കേസ് ഒക്കെ കിട്ടിക്കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ പിന്നെ റെസ്റ്റ് ഒന്നുമില്ല കണ്ടിന്യൂസ്ലി ട്വൻറ്റി ഫോർ അവേഴ്സ് യു ഹാവ് ടു വർക്ക് അപ്പോൾ ദിസ് ഈസ് ഓൾസോ എ ട്രെയിനിങ് ഫോർ സച്ച് എ വർക്ക് ഇസ് ഈ ഇൻസ്ട്രുമെൻറ്റ്സ് ഇൻസ്ട്രുമെൻറ്റ്സ് ഇൻ ദി ഇന്ത്യൻ മണി മാർക്കറ്റ് യു നോ ദർ ആർ മേനി ടൈപ്പ് ഓഫ് ഇൻസ്ട്രുമെൻറ്റ്സ് വി ഫൈൻഡ് ഇൻ ദി പ്രസൻറ്റ് ഡേ മണി മാർക്കറ്റ് സമ്മർ വെരി ട്രഡീഷണൽ ട്രഡീഷണൽ ഇൻസ്ട്രുമെൻറ്റ്സ് ആസ് എ സബ്സ്റ്റിറ്റ്യൂട്ട് ഫോം ഓഫ് മണി and the latest form also is a variety a variety of instruments is found circulating and used as a medium of exchange substitute form of money different substitute form of money is circulating in the indian context out of which some are traditional and some are modern instruments the recent modern instruments as well as the traditional instruments taken together uh, we have to look into the most important provision most important provisions of the traditional and come uh, in the modern instrument in the traditional uh, number 1 check facility check check leaf the facility of check leaf as a substitute form of money aan le as a substitute money of um, check leaf is circulating in the economy it is accepted aan it is an accepted form of a common medium of exchange check leaf 11 a check leaf is issued for 10000 rupees in the name of a person in the name of a person a check leaf is issued on 11 2020 
90 days on. 90 days is the validity period of a checklist. It was some years back, six months I remember. Now, all that instruments reduced to three months on validity period, three months, 90 days. Above, from 1-1-2020, it is valid for 90 days. Any one of the day, any one day, uh, between 1-1-2020 one, one, and uh, uh, 90 days, it is valid a check. After the validity period, suppose you have not encashed during the validity period, you have not encashed a check leaf. You are keeping the check leaf without encashment in your pocket. After the validity period, after validity period is over. After the validity period, the check leaf cannot be encashed. The check leaf is known as what? The check leaf after the validity period of 90 days, known as what? If it is not encashed, after 90 days, it is known as a stale check stale check a stale check so what is a stale check a check after the validity period of 90 days known as stale check if it is not encashed and suppose a stale check is with you a stale check is with you validity period is over but you have not encashed the uh, amount you are keeping that even after the validity period. How can it be, uh, may say, uh, become valid? Uh, you have to revalidate. On 90 day, the check leaf is invalid on, and in order to convert into uh, a valid form, you have to revalidate. That means the drawer of the check, the drawer of the check should strike off the date and write the new date. Write the new date and put his signature against that, full signature. Against that uh, new date, the full signature, if uh, placed, that is known as a revalidated check. If so, from that day onwards, 90 days it is valid. A stale check can be converted as a valid check leave by, by revalidation process. Revalidation, it is possible to um, give another 90 days validity period for the same check leave. Revalidation, full signature of the drawer is necessary. Now suppose the date shown in the check leaf is 1 1 20. 1 1 20, the date that is shown, and uh, today uh, 2 1, second day. And today it is it is not encashed uh, on 1 1 2020, it was not encashed. Today it is valid. Today the check leaf is valid. Today the check leaf is known as what? Dated 1 1 2010. A previous day. Date is shown a previous day, but it is a valid period on it. It is known today as predated check. A predated check. Predated on it. It is a predated check on Which is valid on Which is valid on Date is one day previous. But today also it is valid. You can encash. Uh, no problem is there and uh, uh, in banking language we call that check leaf today as a predated check. A predated check means a previous date it is drawn but the date is not uh, may say uh, finished. It is continuously used for 90 days. After the first day it is known as a predated check. Suppose the date shown in the check leaf is 1-2-2020. Today you got. Today you got a check leaf in your name for 10,000 rupees. But the date is shown as 1-1-2020. 1-1-2020, the date is written. Uh, one, one, not 1-1. One, 1-2-2020, one, one, February. 1-2-2020. 
2020 the date is shown in the checklist and it is received by you today in the but the date is shown as 1 2 2020 that means today the checklist is not valid for engagement Isn't it? the checklist is not valid today for engagement because the date shown is yet to come a future date 1 2 2020 a future date is shown on the checklist and as such today it is not valid for engagement a, a future day yet to come it to come a future date uh, and so that today the checklist is known as a post dated checklist it is called a post dated checklist because the date of encashment is shown a future date from a future date only the checklist is valid and such a checklist today is known as a post dated checklist you have to wait you have to wait for one month then only you can get it in cash. Such a checklist is what is known as post dated checklist. Suppose A gives a checklist to B in his name. A gives a checklist in the name of Mr. B. Drawn on bank C. Drawn on bank C. That means A is having an account in bank C. A is having an account in bank C, so bank C check leaf. Bank C check leaf is given by the account holder to Mr. B for 10,000 rupees. In the name, in the name of B, the check leaf is given for 10,000 rupees. A is the person, B is the, uh, say, C is the bank uh, where A is having his account. Then A, B, C are respectively known as what? A, B and C are respectively known in the banking language as what? A, drawer. A is the drawer of the bank, account holder. Account holder is A and, and whose signature is given on the checklist is the authority to sign the check and so that A is the account holder who is called drawer of the check leaf. Then the next word is drawee, drawee, who is the drawee? Out of B and C, A is drawer, A is drawer and out of B and C who is drawee, drawee by definition means a person or an institution on which it is drawn on which it is drawn so B or C is called a drawee drawee is the bank C this bank C is called a drawee bank drawee bank bank C is called the drawee bank why? because what is the wording in the check leaf pay to Mr. B or bearer a sum of rupees 10,000 that is a word pay to Mr. B or bearer a sum of rupees 10,000 that order is given by the drawer to whom to whom the order is given order is given to the banker give 10,000 rupees from my account that is the order to Mr. B. So the drawee is the bank. See the drawer, uh, see the drawee bank, the bank on whom it is drawn. Direction is given by the depositor to his banker. Pay 10,000 rupee from my account to Mr. B. That is the order. Over here, drawee bank, drawee bank is bank C. A is drawer and C the banker is drawee that is a check leaf is drawn on bank C. Then B is what? B is the person to whom the amount is to pay. Pay. To whom the amount is to pay. 
ఉప్పేయి సో రెస్పెక్టివ్లీ ఏ బి ఆన్ సి ఏ బి ఆన్ సి రెస్పెక్టివ్లీ ఇన్ ద ట్రాన్సాక్షన్ నోన్ యాజ్ డ్రాయర్ పేయి డ్రాయ్ ఏ బి ఆన్ సి ఆర్ రెస్పెక్టివ్లీ నోన్ యాజ్ డ్రాయర్ పేయి అండ్ డ్రాయి ఇన్ ది చెక్ లీఫ్ ట్రాన్సాక్షన్ ఇది ద వర్డింగ్ యూనో పే టు మిస్టర్ పే టు బి ఓర్ డయర్ ఆర్ ఏ సమ్ ఆఫ్ రూపీస్ సో మచ్ దాట్స్ ఎ వెరింగ్ రిటర్న్ ఆన్ ద చెక్ లీఫ్ పే టు మిస్టర్ సో అండ్ సో ఓర్ బయర్ ఆర్ దిస్ ఈస్ కాల్డ్ ఎ బయర్ ఆర్ చెక్ ఇట్ ఈస్ కాల్డ్ ఎ బయర్ ఆర్ చెక్ సో దాట్ ఎనీ పర్సన్ క్యాన్ ఎన్ క్యాష్ దిస్ చెక్ లీవ్ బి ఎలో నీట్ నాట్ రెస్పాన్సిబుల్ we can interest the check leave to any other person and that person can get the check leave in cash from the drawee bank from the drawee bank anybody anybody sent by mr b can in cash the check leave and hence it is known as a bearer check a bearer check any person interested by the interested by the payee can in cash the check leave and if the drawer wants if the drawer wants he can strike off the word bearer you can also strike off this word bearer and then it is not a bearer check that means b himself should in cash b cannot interest any other person to get the check leave in cash it cannot be interested with other person for in cash man if the word bearer is cancelled in the check leaf but there is an option given you can the drawer he alone can do the drawer may cancel the word bearer or he need not cancel if it is not cancelled we call bearer check and if it is called if it is removed it is not a bearer check the concerned pay is expected to in cash the check leave from the uh, drawee bank uh, this is also we may say a general form of check a check leave can be crossed a crossing of a check cross the check 